listen to the Scott Chef. I've got my sparring on and we're ready to start cooking. Today it's back to one of those three ancient cuisines again. The Scotsman and his food. Uh, one of their favorite foods is gingerbread. You've heard of ginger snaps? Gingerbread, that's what we're making today. And it's just about time for us to get started into our recipe. I got a cigarette going and we're ready to begin. Well, let's get started with our gingerbread. All we've got to do is mix these three things together, some water, gingerbread mix, and an egg. And uh, you all know that the sparring is used for keeping your bacon in. Well, that's a good place to keep your eggs, too. Okay, so I have my egg here. It keeps it warm. Okay, so we'll put our egg in the dish. And we just pull that out and I'll wash my hands away. <laughs> here and open it up and this is called the gingerbread mix. You shouldn't keep this in your sparring. Only eggs and bacon can go in the sparring as we all know. And we'll just put that in with our egg. Mmm, smells like gingerbread. And we'll just start to mix that up a little bit. And Add in our water at the same time. Next week, join us when we're going to attempt to make haggis and chips. Be careful not to lean up against the counter if you've got eggs in your sparring. <laughs> That's uh, famous words from other Scotch, Scottish cooks. And now a word from our sponsor, Glenmorangie. There's nothing quite like your Glenmorangie. Well, welcome back. Um, we've about finished beating our batter, so it's time to pour it into the pan. That's probably the most difficult part. And maybe I'll just get a spoon to get the rest of that out with. put this away over here out of the way just now and we'll pop our gingerbread into the oven and see what happens. Remember not to keep your wooden chairs near the oven otherwise you could lose the varnish off the batch. Another thing to be careful of is not to get your sparring stuck in the oven door. Be careful of that. in a minute and to see how that turns out. Now it's time for us to make some whipped cream. So we get another cigarette going and we'll be ready to be started. Um, for that we're going to need some cream and we'll uh, add some sugar and some vanilla and whip it. And we'll end up with some whipped cream to go on top of our gingerbread. shakes of sugar <laughs> and uh, a little bit of that to vanilla as well. So we'll just whip that up for a while with our electric mixer. almost done and pretty soon our gingerbread will be out of the oven and you can see how it uh, how it ends up. 
two weeks from now to join us when we're going to be making kinky style pushing chips. A old penny cook recipe that uh, become uh, famous throughout Boston. And you can tell by the mixer slowing down that this whipped cream is just about ready. And that's about enough uh, mixing for a whipped cream. So we'll just stop there before we get. <coughs> <coughs> Side to our ginger bread, it's done. <coughs> just stick in the, the bread, the uh, gingerbread, to see if it's ready. Well, let's find, let's see if we can find one of those. Fondue fork, that'll do. We'll just peek in the oven and see how it's doing. Oh, not too shabby. Now let's just see if that's done all the way through yet. <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's got a little bit to go yet. We'll, we'll just shut the oven back up again and give it a few more minutes. <coughs> Be careful not to drop stuff on the floor. It can get kind of messy that way. We'll wash that later on. Well, our gingerbread is about ready and it's time for us to, to pull it out of the oven. So we'll get our oven mitts on and just go right in there and pull it out. And there's our gingerbread. <laughs> and uh, we have our whipped cream to go on top of it. But we're going to let that cool for just a little while. And then we'll combine these two together and you can take a look and see how they came out. It's about time for us to uh, take our gingerbread out of the pan and we'll try to serve it. <coughs> Seems to be a little bit on the stubborn side. I'm just going to go around the edge with the knife just to loosen it up just a little bit. Well, a little bit of the time's passed and this has had a chance to cool down a bit. And I have a few arm that's just about ready to come out. I don't think we'll have any problem with it at all this time. And we'll just pull up it under this plate. A couple of taps, and it's out. And just to get it right side up again, we'll do that once again. Be careful not to push these plates together too much, or you'll end up with a, a squish cake. I'm always going to get another plate and slice into that. There's a good Scottish slice, about <laughs> an inch square. Enough for any hungry person. <laughs> Just a little dollop of whipped cream on top. And there we are, ready to serve. Until next time, this is Gary Porter, the Scottish chef, saying cheers. <laughs>